I'm not gonna lie, um, I love these so much for my Christmas decorations that I went ahead and started making plans to use them in my Valentine's Day decorations. And so I made this with the regular paper bags like I did my other snowflakes, but then I also went hunting and I had to hunt quite a bit because apparently finding small paper bags is not an easy feat. I could have ordered them off of Amazon, but I wanted them quicker. So I eventually found these at Hobby Lobby. I got some brown ones and then I got some bigger ones that are white. And the thing that I like about the white ones is you could really go crazy with markers on them and it would turn out beautifully or glitter like glitter glue or just glitter in general, you could make such beautiful hanging decorations with these. So these were $1.99 a piece, and then I think they were on sale 40% off. And these were in the baking aisle. And then these were in like the paper craft aisle. So they have different paper bags in all sorts of, I looked in like four different places for them. It's crazy. These are called glassine bags and these were $2.99 a piece. But I didn't feel too bad because there are 24 in, in here. So I'm not sure how many it's going to take to make a snowflake with these smaller bags because I've not ever tried. So today is going to be an experiment, but I'm up for it. And I hope that you are as well. I'm excited to get into it. So I have figured out a much easier way to, to cut them more symmetrically, I guess. And I made an entire tutorial about it on the blog. So what you do is you're going to actually fold the bag in half lengthwise like this. I'm going to draw my hearts. So let's see what this one turns out. I did a smaller version of my other bag. So that's what that will turn out like. Okay, so for these bags, they don't match. Obviously there is, this one is shorter than this part. So you don't want to make glue go all the way up. Otherwise you'll glue them together. So make sure to only glue up to the end of the shortest part so that the bag can still open. So I kind of sandwiched mine together that way. Looks like eight is half of them. So I'm gonna need 16 to do these smaller ones. It's so cute, it's so little bee. cute let's think about this design I want to do something a little bit different so let's try that tip and then so cool Okay, so I got the brown ones done. And if you buy two packages, since it takes 16 bags to make those properly, you get three of the si this size snowflake out of two of those packages. So not terrible. And I, I really love this one. I wasn't really sure because I thought it was kind of funky, but it sure did turn out beautiful when it's all put together. So don't be afraid to try different patterns. And also it occurred to me that if you wanted to make these to where you could use them over and over again, when you get to the very end of the stack and you're ready to connect the two ends, use double-sided tape instead of glue because then you can just unattach it and make sure to mark where that is so that you know where to unattach it. And then you can just fold it down flat and put it in a little Ziploc bag and use it again for the next season. So 
that's a way to get way more bang for your buck. I wish I had considered that before I made all of my snowflakes. I guess we'll be trying them next year. Maybe I'll let my kids make them next year instead of me. And I think that that would be a really fun craft because this is definitely a craft that kids can do. And there's literally like no way to actually mess it up as long as you follow the main steps of the rules of where to cut and where to place the glue. I don't think you'll have any problems with a kid doing this project. I think they'd have fun. So let's use these. This package again comes with 24. So I will get three again out of these packages. One, two, three. So I've got my stacks of 16. Let's come up with the pattern for this. Let's try something really cute. Let's try um, something like that. Let's try that. And then again, down this side. Now you want to make sure to keep some of the sides intact. Otherwise, when you cut it, these two parts will not be connected at all and it won't work. So make sure to leave a space where they are still connected. So I like that. And you could use a red Sharpie too, to make it even more Valentine's instead of a black one. Oh, that's cool. I really like that. See, it's so much fun making these different options. They're so much fun. You literally just can't go wrong with any of them. And you can do as simple or as complicated as you want to get. In my post, I actually made one that was a snowman and it looks so cute. I can't wait to try it for like a full. And for this, I'm gonna try to do an arabesque pattern. Something like that. Let's see how that turns out. I think that's pretty. Okay, I'm gonna fold all my bags. Okay, I've got them all out now, so now comes the fun part. So this is the point where you would use the double-sided tape if you wanted to keep this for another holiday, because then you could just unfold it and then it would be flat like this. Very cool. I like it. I wish that I had even smaller bags because I think little like miniature ones would be absolutely adorable. Okay, put that one to the side and let's do a different pattern. I'm pretty sure this one is going to be my favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna glue it together and then let's see, but I'm betting on it that this is probably gonna be my favorite snowflake. I love it. I knew I would. Super cute. But having the heart in the middle, you can't really tell it's a heart really. So maybe next time I would do hearts on the side again, just so you could see them better. Okay, I'm at the point where I would like to hang them up now. So I have my little single hole punch and I am just going to snap a hole right in there. And then I have string. I'm not sure how much string I want because I don't know how far. I'm going to hang these in my window. Some of them in the window, like maybe two in each window, and then I'm going to hang some of them on this tree. So pretty. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit longer one. I'm going to do a big white one. Thank goodness I'm tall. I think that is so cute. I don't know that you can see it very well. 
They just make really cute decorations. Okay, let's do the same thing. It's the other window. Okay, so I've already started on my rag, my little rag wreath that I wanted to make here. I got this wire frame from Hobby Lobby, but you can get them from the Dollar Tree. They were just completely sold out by the time I went in. But it's okay. It was only $3.50 at the at Hobby Lobby, so not that much. I'm gonna double the price, but still. And I'm just using these scraps that I have of my drop cloth material, just some scraps. I also have some scraps from a linen tablecloth that I had cut up and some linen cloth as well that I'd used for a sewing project. I also picked up these gorgeous chiffon ribbon from Hobby Lobby in this really pretty mossy green color because this is kind of the color that I'm going for and it's very velvety and beautiful. And I'm gonna do some of this in the wreath as well. And then I'm gonna hang it. I think I'm gonna use the smaller stuff in the wreath and then maybe some of the bigger stuff as well and then just hang it that way. So I'm just gonna try to pepper it in, but I'm also trying to do this inner circle with one thing so it's more uniform and then come on the outside with some of the other stuff. No rhyme or reason. I cut them into like one inch strips, ish, 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 and I am cutting them, I would say probably six inches long. I don't know, five or six inches long. This just long enough for me to be able to tie a knot in it. And then you just stick it in there and tie a knot. And this is another really great project if you had a child that loves crafts and wants to do some Valentine's Day crafts with you. This is another one that would be a really great project because it's literally just tying one knot and then moving on and ripping up fabric, which I'm sure they would have a blast doing. So I always like to do these types of projects first to kind of gauge the age level, like if my kids could do it or not. And then see if my children would be interested in this kind of work. <laughs> some of them might consider it work and some of them might consider it fun. The nice thing about drop cloth fabric is the neutral base, first of all, and second of all, because it is um, super heavy that it takes up more space. So you need less to fill it, which is great. And also it's just been sitting in there waiting for me to be able to do something with it. And it's very like, you see that? Like it's very scrappy looking. So if you really like that farmhousey vintage vibe, this is the perfect fabric for that. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that process took a bit. It took me a second, but I really, really love it. I mean, I'm covered, literally like covered in thread, but you know, sacrifice. You sacrifice sometimes for beauty. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. It's probably gonna be shedding threads for a while, but that's all right. I'm loving this neutral color palette. I just think it looks so classy. And here's the great thing about this is it works really well for spring in general. So no need to take it down after Valentine's Day. Just leave it up for your Easter decorations. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Maybe I'll just add like a couple of little, a bird, maybe some eggs with some um, floral wire so that it can be removed. I'm not a big fan of using hot glue on things that can be multi-purpose. So I really love it. I think it's fantastic looking. You can let me know in the comments what you think about it. And okay, on to the next project. <laughs> and I'm excited about it. Let us make some salt dough Valentine's hearts. I have wanted to make some salt dough ornaments slash decorations for a while now. And again, I'm just going to do it. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I found a perfect little heart cookie cutter that I'm going to use. The other ones are cute too. If you wanted to use that, you could even make like a little bunting with them. I think that would be really cute, but I'm going to make something else. <laughs> I have a rolling pin, a cookie sheet with some parchment paper on it. I have three quarters cups of water, and then I have another measuring cup for my salt and my flour. I have a bowl and a spatula. And then you're going to need something to poke a hole or two holes in your ornament slash whatever you wanna call it. And I thought I would try to use this for texture on the ornaments themselves. You also need salt. 
obviously this is 59 cents at Target, so it's the cheapest place to get it pretty much. And then I also got unbleached all-purpose flour Ooh, for this project. I have some paint brushes and then I also have a bunch of paints. I'm also gonna need my Mod Podge, which I don't have in here. So I'm gonna get that after we actually have the ornaments and we're at them. And I'm gonna coat them in that after they are painted and dried. Ooh, I have some really beautiful colors in here. Maybe I'll do this really pretty deep purplish color. I wonder if I have a green. I wanted to do some different colors for Valentine's Day instead of the traditional pink or red. English ivy green, that's a possibility. But I wanted to do something that was non-typical. So something elegant looking, but also not the typical pink and red that is so prevalent in this time of year. So... Let us see. We need two cups of flour. I'm gonna make an absolute mess. I know it. I'm prepared, I think. Ugh. Why do I have to make it so hard to get into this flour? Seriously, it's like Fort Knox. They're just daring us to make a mess of ourselves. Two cups of flour. Ah, that looks about right. Oh my. Two cups of flour. One cup of salt. It's like they think people are gonna be stealing salt from you. This makes me think of the days of our lives. One cup of salt and three quarters of cups of water. You know what I wanna do? I think I wanna add some, I think I wanna add some essential oils to this so that they smell really good. I wonder if they would smell good after baking. Let's do an experiment. I'm gonna go get some essential oils. Okay, I'm going to use cedar wood and I'm just gonna put a bunch in there. I used to think you didn't need very many, very much essential oils until I started researching it. And for like candles, the recommendations are much higher than I would have thought. Okay, let's see about that. I can always add more. Of course, you could do an essential oil that would be more Valentine's day -y, like rose or any kind of floral scent, I think, would seem more Valentine's Day appropriate than cedar. But I like cedar, so I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, I'm gonna get in here with my hands. Oh, I can smell that cedar wood. <laughs> I'm gonna actually go and get some more water because this looks quite loose of a dough. That one didn't turn out very well. I'm telling you, that cedar wood, oh my goodness. These smell so good, I hope that it makes it through the oven. Still smelling like that. I got them all out, and you can see that they did retain a lot of their, their patterns on them. And, oh my goodness, let me just say that when I took them out of the oven, the oven smelled gloriously of cedar. And they do very much smell like cedar still. So you can definitely do that. Add essential oils to your salt dough. And I just have to say that I made a huge mistake when I was cooking them. <laughs> I did it as the directions said, and I don't think that the directions called for it cooking long enough. They asked for it to stay in 20 minutes and then flip them over and then cook them for 10 minutes longer. That was nowhere near long enough time. So I actually forgot them in the oven for hours. And look, they turned out great. So you literally can't screw them up, I don't think. I mean, now the back is, you know, a little bit bubbly, but 
you won't see that back, so it's okay. You know, if you make a mistake and leave them in too long, don't worry about it, it's gonna be all right. You can also air dry them, but I'm writing a post with all of the information um, on all of the crafts that I do today. They will have individual posts and I will link them when I'm done with them so that you have all of the directions and any supplies that you need and so forth and so on. Whatever. So I have two little cups for my two different colors. I've got a really pretty um, marsh green by Apple Barrel and a berry wine by Folk Art. It's a really pretty, like a darker wine color. And then I just have two paint brushes, the ones that I could find. And I put a tiny bit of water on the back to kind of make it a wash more than an actual paint. And so we're just going to paint them and I'm going to kind of paint them, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit of both, I think, maybe. We'll see. I'm gonna experiment with one or two and then see what I like and then go from there. Okay, I let them dry and they are, I don't even know if you can see, but they have just the slightest bit of sheen. And I used the gloss version because I thought, you know, I wanted to be able to see it a little bit shinier. I didn't want it matte. I think they look really pretty. Um, next time though, personally, I may not paint mine. I think I like the just the plain version. One regular ornament in each color just to see. Like I'm gonna put it on my tree over there. And then I made six in each color. So I'm gonna alternate them on the string that I've got here. So I just have some regular like baker's twine that I'm going to attempt to string it on. So I am changing out the beautiful illustrations that I had in here for Christmas, which was Arthur Rackham's illustrations of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And I'm switching them out for some beautiful vintage Valentine's Day cards that I found. And I have curated a little collection for you and they are free to download and use. All you have to do is go to my subscribers library and I will have all of that information down for you below or you can just go to capturingwonderland.com and my subscribers library sign up page is literally right on the front menu. So super easy to get to. It's an exclusive membership library with all kinds of resources added all the time and it's completely free. So you don't need to worry about what things cost in there because they are free for you. These are just four of my favorite ones and I actually do have some Valentine's Day art coming out, but I'm going to do this for now because I really loved these Valentine's Day cards. I thought they were so charming. And it just adds a little bit of whimsy to the holiday, which is my favorite. So cute. Oh, I didn't show those to you. Sorry. Little Scottish boy. And a little girl in a pink dress. So cute. Super easy way to add some decorations to your room without costing you anything. And literally just took a moment of my time. Look how pretty this bunting looks with all the rest of the Valentine's cards. So pretty. 
It's like my favorite thing to do now. Every holiday I'm gonna make a bunting, just kind of expect it. Okay, after much gnashing of teeth, I finally got it figured out. I moved this down a little bit so that it is still reachable to my children should they want to write a lovely Valentine's note for one of their siblings. And also I put this one where that used to be and I think it turned out spectacular. I absolutely love it. I think it is understated, which is again, the kind of decorating I love to do, especially for holidays. So it's just enough to let you know that I'm decorating for Valentine's Day, but it's not like in your face, it's Valentine's Day kind of decorating, which is, you know, what mainstream typically does with their decorating techniques. Very bright and kind of obnoxious colors, which are not my thing. So. I went with a more muted palette, obviously. I really loved this mossy green and I brought it in with the rag wreath as well. And um, guys, I hope that you really loved all of these projects and I hope that you do some of them or use some of these resources. They were a lot of fun. Actually, honestly, I think that rag wreath is like my favorite. I had no idea that I would love it so much, but it is so timeless. It is beautiful. And I plan on leaving that up through Easter at least, maybe a little bit longer. Depends on what ideas I come up for spring wreaths, which let's be honest, I probably have a few going around there. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, I loved the snowflake slight Valentine's Day hanging paper decorations, I guess we could call them. Although honestly, in February it could snow as well. So it's totally appropriate to do Valentine's Day snowflakes. And then I also really, of course, love the vintage aspect with these pretty little cards and using them as my wall art. All wonderful, fun projects, definitely easy to do with kids um, or as family activities. So thank you so much guys for watching all the way through. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if this content is something that you enjoy watching. Also, don't forget to come back on Monday. I'm introducing a brand new series I'm super excited about. And I finally picked out the paint color for my daughter's bedroom. And here's a shocker, it's not gonna be white. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up really soon. I have so many other projects planned. I'm dying to get to that, to the other furniture that I have in here. So I may actually put up a poll to see which pieces of furniture, you, like which one you think I should do next and give you guys the choice on that because I have quite a few. So anyway, thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.